Since 1939, this small rocky island close to Wellington's popular Scorching Bay has been the nesting ground for a colony of white-fronted terns. Each year, at about the beginning of July, a few terns or sea swallows begin to visit the rock, and by the end of September, the main group, about 100 birds in all, has arrived at the summer home. For the past five summers, Bill Huggins has used school holidays to make a detailed study of the colony. Living nearby, he's a faithful custodian of the small seabirds, protecting them from stray animals and vandals on what may be the world's smallest bird sanctuary. Someone out fishing. Bill reports that the young male tern woos his lady fair in much the same way as his human counterpart, but takes along a small fish instead of a box of chocolates or bunch of flowers. Acceptance of the fish is usually a prelude to mating, but the young man's proposal gift is not always found acceptable. Go away, I've got other fish to try. Will she take the bait? That is the question. Neighbours take a friendly interest, and all is well when the young gallant is accepted with the customary formality. As the old proverb has it, one good turn deserves another. As turns don't build elaborate nests, the housing problem is slight, provided the section is secure. Until the eggs are laid, turns guard the rock by day only, returning each morning. They probably roost on one of the larger islands in Wellington Harbour. The nests are usually no more than a few pebbles, placed so as to keep the eggs from rolling into the sea or into someone else's nest. Hatching the eggs is a cooperative business. For part of each day, father does the housekeeping, such as it is, while mother goes fishing. Chicks appear in about 26 days. When first hatched, they're small and limp, but by the second day, they're fluffier and their black eyes are open. The down is a mottled mixture of black, tan and cream. The rate of growth is amazing and in a few days they're wandering about, but not yet able to look after themselves. Time passes quickly. With the coming of the new year, the young and their parents begin to leave the summer home. By February, almost all the terns have left to find other haunts. Bill Huggins closes his sketchbook to await July and the return of the turns to their island rock near Wellington City.